Recording in progress. Are we rolling, Bob? because there's some financial information we want to discuss and hopefully if um, Andrew gets finished with the VPW meeting he'll be here and it'll be good for him to be part of the um, hear part of that discussion okay. um, which will be a little longer than a normal financial discussion it'll be that plus a few other things can you hear me yes, yes. I'd like to shoot myself though that's oh <laughs> Um, we were not going to call on you to do anything exceptional, except for just be yourself. No. And that is we're not doing a Walmart. No. Really. no. So I guess um, call to order, and um, the first item of business is the um, approval of the minutes from our last meeting. I only have one thing: is that Janet is Liz's Parks and Rec, and she's actually an officio. Ex-officio? Ex-officio, mm -hmm. yeah. It's just a staff member with no voting. Is that in other things like that, too? Um, sure. You want to change your title to ex-officio? Okay. Without yeah. objection? No objection. All right. Um, any other changes? Any other things on the minute? Tony? Come on. Listen. He said, Tony, do you have any? Uh, Come on. You always have something. something. <laughs> okay. All right. We have a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Minutes are approved. and the uh, commitments and plans for the DeWitt Godfrey sculpture. Um, I have a couple of things here to talk about. Um, as we know, the uh, city council met on this and decided to approve it. Um, and uh, as I try to think about like the future and I, I would like to get some clarification from Janet from you on um, since um, the policy says we send it to city council if it's, it has a major impact and I think we probably didn't think this thing had a major impact and your interpretation was it was so I was wondering if you could um, to identify what gave it a major impact in your mind to make that decision. So if we need to um, clarify the definition in the city policy, you know, we can do that going forward. Well, I think that the primary issue was that there was no, um, the, the, the piece has not been sculpted yet. And so there were no dimensions provided and we had the conversation with the friends at Canal Front Park and they expressed their concerns as well. Um, 
So because of that, I felt that it was necessary to go to mayor and council because we did not have, or I did not have the size dimensions. Well, um, <clears throat> I think if the, um, the, the mock-up that you saw, the rendering that you saw was of a certain size, I mean, we don't have the exact dimensions, but let's just say it was 50% you know, bigger um, I, I don't know whether just jaw, the size of it is a major impact on the city. When we wrote that, when we wrote that, we were talking about you know the actual impact. Is it going to block traffic? Is it going to uh, you know cause you know a problem? Is it going to have a, a theme that's that's challenging and, and upset people? And I, I'm not sure that the the size alone was was what we were thinking about when it was written. Major impact. I think when this whole committee was started, uh, from what I understand, we created this committee so that mayor and city council would not have to go through the process of approving different pieces of art. And well, I think that's what the intention was. But I mean, I, I just want to mention that because if if we're going to have to do that every time, then there's well, no you don't have to do it every time. Okay. You didn't have to do it for the right. pieces this summer. Um, and my understanding was that originally, before the policy was revised, it did go to city council. Um, so I, I just I, I did want to clarify that, that that was a revision to the policy. Mm -hmm. Before that, everything had to go. And it was um, through, I think, Cliff, you and the mayor talking about it and saying, and, and it's not that the wording wasn't major impact. The, the wording is in the policy that if it, is a, if it is minor, that it would be approved. And if in the Parks and Recreation Administrator's view it was not minor, so not minor versus major, I mean, I, it's a little bit of semantics, but, but again, that was kind of the, the fast track that was added to the policy so that not everything has to go. But again, we, we did hear some pushback from the overfalls about it, and I think that the, the sense was it's better to err on the side of more transparency than not. Um, and, and that, so I, I, certainly the policy could be clarified if, if you want clearer mm -hmm. guidelines, but I, I think, you know, it put the discretion with that position, and I think, you know, it, if, it, if there's going to be discretion, the discretion's there, and I don't know that if we need to add more criteria that might make it easier to actually in the last excuse meeting me, excuse we me, tried to identify Tony, could you excuse me just put some second? substance behind what is a large sculpture and what is not and okay we never actually did it thank you thank you tony Anne marie hold on i'm gonna i need to read this to you if they determine this is this is her job right. it doesn't say minor it doesn't say what you just said you're wrong it says, if they determine the overall impact of the installation to be minor, they may approve the work. Right. If major, yeah. then they send the recommendation to the mayor and city council. So she has to say that in her head that this is a major, has a major impact on the city to send it to city council. And in any case, we, don't, we won't resolve that tonight. But if we need to clarify that going forward, I don't think that we want to just, it's not based on size, it's based on impact. And it was written that way so that it, if it was major, it goes to the city. It is, yeah. Thank you. And, and size is, um, we talked about this all, you know, several times, that it's not the size. It's you know, what it's made of. Tim? Uh, I would like to encourage the committee to take this issue up at a in a meeting and actually have an earnest discussion well, about reason, this, okay. because I think it does warrant a serious discussion and a full airing. Because frankly, when I read the, you know, the, your governing rules, 
Uh, it's not clear what is minor or what is major. Mm -hmm. So well, I think I think that more, was that was the point. I think like we need helpful. to define we need to define what is minor or major because Correct. it was really vague. We had we had all considered right and at that meeting when we we're writing it we we're saying well these these temporary things that we're doing in the park they're, they're not going to have a major impact on the city they're going to be minor so so and we did what three or four other Five, four, four. projects that didn't require it so right. I, I think right. that's and, and we right. so, so i think and it's I, a good discussion that right. obviously Put it on if the, the person that is responsible for making that decision there needs to be more clarity from the committee because right. it's being left rather nebulous, um, and so the intent needs to be clarified. So I would yeah. suggest yeah. that yeah. you might want to take the policy back for, for revision. The intent, yeah. the intent of the language was to be vague, and thinking that we could use common sense and not bother the city council. Because we don't want to get too mired into this you know, if you're trying to find major and minor, that becomes really hard, and then you have a whole other list of things to well, then you might jump through. Suggest... So we just need to s explain what we think about right. is, is a, a major thing and advise you that this is what we think. And, and if you think it's different, then we can go and, and get it settled right. but, uh, by, by putting language in our policy that clarifies it, which is always, all you got to do is put a definition in in that policy saying we're defining major That's as fine. this and minor as that. Right. But I, I definitely do think that our job was to try and keep stuff from going to city council and putting it on the agenda unnecessarily and that was one of the reasons we were formed. And so I think we failed in that by sending this thing that there was a no even discussion. So anyway. Well, and the right. other thing is that we have to move pretty fast. True. Right. True. And we have had things in the past that haven't had full dimensions or were made just for us, like the squirts were made just for us. Uh -huh. They hadn't yeah. been before. I mean, we, we, and if you're, if you're going to contract for pieces not built, you won't have the exact dimensions, but when we, we said it's like 10 by 12 or 14, we have a, we have a box. I, I mean, I think it's understandable. That Cliff, I'm going to speak. Cliff, may I just speak to this? The, I, thank you uh, for putting this image up. This illustrates yeah. the, the point that I'd like to make very uh, in my comment, and that is, <coughs> The piece of art has a figure of a human being adjacent. And I assume that that model would be a six foot tall, per indicate the scale of the mm -hmm. art to a six foot tall person. And if that is in fact the message that is being telegraphed in this image, uh, I think it's very helpful to actually have, you know, a discussion about scale and how appropriate it is in this space. Well, I mean, there would be, there's, it's a, it'll be. Because that is discussion. taller than what we've had in Canal Front that Park. Is, that before. is actually less tall than the one we took down. It's just, you don't, you don't have that, and we had that image last time, but let's not go there. For okay, the, no. I just, again, it's major, minor, and, and I, I would encourage was, the committee I, to put it on the agenda for a future discussion. So when we, we're talking about impact, we're talking about things that disrupt the city was the intention like that really disrupts daily life not not just big or small so that's something that might need to be addressed in the future yeah that's that's all i was suggesting all right the next thing on this um jeff dewitt i guess the we're signed we, and we have the contract went out and the checks went out right great that's correct uh, we need to get a um uh captain for this installation like we had it last year. Um, um, I'm, the captain has to do essentially only one or two things in this particular install. You have to get some concrete poured in the park. And um, we also need to have, uh, because once the installation comes, it's going to be very different than the other ones. It's a lot more professional. So somebody, and I was thinking maybe I could get Barry to volunteer to be captain because he works with the parks commissioners and he knows the people that are already working in that park before the other contract. I, could, I, I hear a Barry. train coming through the yard. <laughs> <laughs> and then when the install happens, which is, uh, when the dates are like, they're mid-March and they're on the contract. Uh, the in or May? Uh, May, sorry. Okay. All right. Uh, will you be here in May? 
We'd be here in April. Because we have to pour the concrete before it gets here yeah. in the month of September. So does a, you accept? I have a question about yeah. the concrete. Okay. I am very happy with this sketch because the concrete is below the surface and I would like it to look like that at the end. Hmm. How do I feel about that? Hmm. Um, I would say <laughs> that the... I, I would say I mean, I, we did have that... Sod, eye. you know, something... It has been brought up in discussions, I'm not sure exactly where, about making it green or making it grassy, but I, I believe the install and the, and the setup, and the, that really will be up to the artist. Well, I'm happy to ask the artist, but that's how the art artist rendered it. So I just think we should follow the rendering, and so, or you know, ask the artist if that's actually what he meant, because mm -hmm. having a big white pad under it will detract from its actual okay. sculptureness. And I find that the big white pad is problematic. I mean, sometimes you need the pedestal, but I just want to definitely consult with the artist about this because. I, yeah, I think that we definitely have to have to do that. I think at this point the artist mm -hmm. is expecting a concrete pad. Well, I know, but in but this but image, he has covered the concrete pad with uh, some type of greenery, yeah, and I I'm voting for that. Just so you know. Um, I think that. We have to, I don't know how heavy this stuff is. The greenery or the, the thing? The well, steel. Oh. So, so I don't think we can just yeah. sit it on the gravel. So let's no, get I, I agree. this conversation. But at this point, he's asked for a concrete pad. We have the approval to put a concrete pad in the park. And unless it changes going forward, we have to finish that 10 foot by 10 foot. Ten. May I ask a question about this, please? <clears throat> a 10 by 10 foot square pad is 100 square feet. In this image that is shown, and I realize that this is a piece of art that has not been made, correct? Mm -hmm. He's making something that does not exist. My question is, is it really necessary to have a, t a 100 square foot pad to accomplish what is accomplished there? Or could you not put uh, you know, uh, two by two, a series of two by two pads to support the art instead of having one monolithic I, pad. Well, I think, Tim, that when an artist creates a piece of work, they like to frame it themselves. And okay. they're going to take responsibility for its safety. Right. So, so I don't think we want to mess with what the artist has done before. I mean, we can talk to him and talk about painting it green or covering it and create sure. paper. Right? But, but, but I think that the physicality of, right. these, of these pieces are, are going to require... I, a and I understand what you're saying. Part. That's a good point, Cliff. My point is, is that if it's going in the same place as the uh, lava, I'm sorry, lava and leaves, mm -hmm. I'm probably butchering the name. Uh, if it's going in there, that, to me that's a environmental sensitive area you know it's it's a drainage area and i was just thinking having less concrete in that area might be helpful for the design of the drain that's all well we can talk i don't know to what him, i'm talking and we, about and we can talk to him and maybe it, it can be nine by nine and and the pieces can hang out more um i do think that how that thing is framed and how it's installed is in the ver purview of the artist. Sure, and see, and, this is why uh, I know can, nothing about we art. We can have all these discussions with him, and we'll see where it ends up. I mean, I'm right. not I, hanging my hat. You can ask him. I think also, doesn't he arrange? The, I mean, it comes almost uh, like a modular um, arrangement, doesn't it? I mean, it doesn't come I, put together <laughs> like that. So if it's got if it's got separate bases based on an idea that might not work. When I see what you're it. saying. And so he actually assembles it on site, is what I, you're I'm suggesting? Sure. I, we've passed out, right. we've passed out um, you know, at least 10, 15, 10 pictures of his work installed. I remember that. Okay, so in looking at them, I think he's got a couple of different ways he installs them. One is um, pins in concrete, and the other is like a piece of angle iron, which could be you know, a bracket brace that he lays down, and then 
the assembled cysts because these will these circles will probably come individually on a tr on a flatbed and then he will assemble I them see. and tie them all together. Okay. So I don't, it's not so much like putting something down. It's going to be built and it's going to be built in in New York and then it's going to come be taken apart and then come back down and it's rebuilt here. Thank you. So so I, I we won't have a lot of leeway, but but the size that he's going to need, you know, we can talk to him. Yep. Um, if you if you think that uh, and and ask him what do you absolutely need because he may uh, you know this is not gonna him, it may be easier for him to do a he can do a smaller one but if you want I mean you can make yeah, three I'm, feet by three feet it's just something I, I, I thought that, of I, he's, he's he's got his contract he's 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 he has, <coughs> and I think the contract um, includes the base that we will provide so it's not really something we can change at this point. I understand. Thank you very much for Please. indulging my question. Clear. Mm -hmm. Sir. Um, I think this is the right time for me to actually read a prepared statement. And I would like to be able to read it without interruption. Whilst can I'm excited. Can we, can we speak up can a we little bit? Like yeah. I mean, can we it's finish all to do with the wish to do with sculpture? Whilst I'm excited that we've been able to engage with a nationally known sculptor, I'm concerned about the process we have used to get to where we now are. And I think it is important that we all understand this process. At a previous PAC meeting, we discussed Mr. Godfrey's work and viewed a sample of it. Chairman Diver stated a rendering of the proposed sculpture had been provided. I do not recall this rendering being shown to members of this commission. A question was raised about the need to enlarge the concrete pad in Canal Front Park where previous temporary art had been placed in order to accept this as yet unknown, unmade sculpture. Subsequently, Chairman Diver was invited to a Friends of Canal Front Park meeting to discuss the proposed project and in particular the requirement to enlarge the concrete pad. The following were also invited to attend. Mike Safina, President of the Overfalls Foundation, Barry Duncan, Janet Reeves, and myself. Mike Safina spoke at some length concerning the size of any proposed sculpture inhibiting the view of the ship. He later backed his comments up with a letter requesting that any sculpture placed within sight lines of the ship be limited to 10 feet in length, height, or width. Peter Issel, board chairman of the Friends of Canal Front Park, then stated that his board would discuss whether they thought it appropriate to have a relatively large sculpture placed in the park, and he would get back to Chair Diver. At that point, the invited guests, except Janet Reeves, left the meeting. It is my understanding that no such further discussion took place by the Friends of the Canal Front Park, and no vote was taken. Yet Peter Issel then wrote to Cliff, stating that the Friends Board had approved the placement of the sculpture, quote unquote, pavilion, in the park. It subsequently came to my attention that an artist proposal or contract for the sculpture was in the hands of the city manager awaiting signature. It is my belief that all members of PAC should have had the opportunity to review this proposal or contract and make any suggested amendments as they saw fit. Although the contract has now been signed, it is unclear to me whether any size limitations were imposed upon the artist who has yet to make the piece. I make these comments because I believe it is important that we be seen to operate in accordance with city policy for the placement of any art, temporary or permanent, on city property, and that we follow all the necessary rules regarding Freedom of Information Act. In this particular instance, I fear we have not. I also believe that when seeking to place a piece of art in the Canal Front Park, we consult with all those entities who have a vested interest in the park. In this instance, we did not. Furthermore, it seems that Mike Safina's request that any sculpture placed within the sight lines of the overfalls be limited in size appears to have been ignored. 
As you may know, my three-year term on this commission ends on the 31st of December. I have decided I can no longer continue to serve on a public commission that pays scant regard to the city policy on the placement of public art on city property. That, at times, does not follow Freedom of Information Act regulations and rarely conducts its meetings in accordance with Robert's Rules of Order. I shall therefore be writing to the Mayor asking not to be appointed to another three-year term and our December meeting will be my last. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. So, you would agree to be our captain? Yes. Okay, great. So we have captain uh, has been assigned to be Barry and Nancy will help him. Um, I will set up a phone call for both you guys and the artist within the next week if you want and uh, we can get that. Um, That'd be great. The, the issues and the dimensions of the base and the construction first kind of conversation. I don't know when he's going to make it, December or January. Um, all right. Uh, anything else on DeWitt? Okay. The city sponsored bus trip to Grimstone. Well, December 1st is the day when we can request uh, a reservation for our group to visit. Uh, so I'm going to be contacting them tomorrow. Uh, I just wanted to clarify a date. We said uh, the end of April, probably on a Thursday. Um, so uh, that would be like the 21st or the 20th or the 27th of April. Does anybody know of any conflicting events at that time. April. When is Easter? I was just I, asking. Easter you. is the ninth. Oh the yeah, ninth. it's after okay. Easter. Okay. So what day of the week we're talking? Pardon me? Uh, what days of the week? Thursday. 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 The thirteenth or the twentieth? No, the twentieth or the twenty seventh. We don't wanna when's the tulip <coughs> festival? It usually starts like late March. I mean, I think that's the big thing that we want to right. not conflict with. So when I talk to these people, um, will you give me the uh, authority to agree to one of these dates with them, or should we come back for further clarification? I would like to give you the authority. What was I so we only meet once a month. I think you should have authority. Just to, go, to go ahead. And you could talk to them. Maybe they already have somebody on the 20th, and we, you want to do the 27th to have some leeway. And is, is Thursday the only? Uh, yeah, this is going to be no matter what weather we have or right. anything, we can't, <laughs> we can't accommodate that. And, so, and lo looking at transportation, which is the next big thing, because that's going to be our cost. The, the park, I mean, the garden itself is no charge, so that's great. Right. Um, uh, and the, I got this handy dandy cost calculator for bus rental off. <laughs> um, but looking at this, I, I think we probably would be in the neighbor, looking in the neighborhood of like a 39 passenger vehicle. We don't want it, uh, a, a, I'm sorry, 49 passenger motor coach is a $1,190. 1190 is that what you said? Mm -hmm. What was that? 1190 $1,200? Yeah. Thank you. Um, and what's the size smaller? Did we look at the size smaller? Uh, 49, uh, we well, 30. 35 you know, there are all the <laughs> factors about the distance, 
the time, whether it's round trip, um, all that kind of stuff. But there's a 28 passenger uh, minibus. We want something bigger than that, I would say. Um, 44 passenger is like a school bus. And then this 49 passenger motor coach and a 56 passenger motor coach. So I think the 49 passenger looks like probably the best option. Yeah, and we can't and go you know there on a school bus. I mean, that would... You don't want to go on a school bus? No, no way. Is that 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 far? <laughs> it's two hours. I've done that. Yes. Carol, I have a question for you. How, uh, do you know how many people like Funstone, well, Funstone can accommodate at any one day or time? They do take fairly large groups. Okay. But that's the idea of trying to get our name in and get a reservation so they don't have like three groups that are Sure. Big. But they would have no trouble accommodating if you got if you, 49 no, subscribers, I, I they'd have no trouble so. accommodating. They, they only take a few hundred people a day. Right, that was that's my impression. And, and I was wondering also if, if we could get, if it makes sense, if this also includes, as you're talking to them, like a docent that goes with us, could it be possible to, to inquire about that? Yes, yeah, certainly I will inquire, they, but they, they ordinarily, I mean, on their site, they do not provide a docent. Um, they have, I believe they have people scattered throughout the park that could answer questions, mm. but there are no guided tour kinds the, of things. And that's groups. a very big group to give a Well, tour I was going to say, yeah. we'd have to break that down into two groups of 20 if you yeah. need to. Uh, is that how many we're targeting? 40 people? I think that's awfully ambitious. Well, 30 people on a 40 person bus is more comfortable. <laughs> well, that's true, but we, then we got to divide the cost by the number of people and how much they're going to be paying to well, go on this trip. You have to come up with a minimum number yeah. and a maximum number. I mean, like the 25. trip goes if you have 25, or, you know, I mean, that's how I would do it. Just well, it, it depends on what, exactly. what size vehicles are available, too. Yeah. Well, I think that. Um, so, I, I mean, I'm not going to be making any agreements with anybody, obviously, but I, I will be gathering more information and get back to you about it. But as a ballpark, we're thinking in the 30, 40 number of people on, the, on this tour. I mean, I would hope that all of us would go. <laughs> so there, there's a good 10... 12 there, um, and then everybody bring a friend and we're ready to go. Well, so what do you, what do you talk about in terms of cost then? So have you what's your, get, what's your, the ballpark of what it's going to cost per person? 50 bucks, 25 bucks? It, it's going to depend on how much the bus costs. So well, I would say, I would costs. say you though, this, didn't you? but if it's, if it's $1,200 and we add 300 for a tip and anything we need well, possible, and then we have 25 people go at 60 bucks a person, and then if okay. anything after that is anything okay. after that. That's all. And okay. done and done. I like her thinking. And th this, these, num that, these numbers are from this U.S. Coachways. I mean, there may be better deals out there sure. also. But also we want the good bus. Right. Make sure it's yeah. a good bus. Yeah. <laughs> Don't get that crappy bus. Um, I, I, I was, got a pee. I was, and, uh, <laughs> you know. and 60 bucks, I mean, 60 bucks seems very reasonable to me. Right. And, mm -hmm. uh, and I also, I want to look into who, um, um, <laughs> Lewis and Bloom usually has a trip to the Philadelphia Flower Show every year on a oh, yeah. bus and find out who they use. Good I mean. Idea. And then definitely there's more than one company. And I do feel like it's good to plan for that 30 to 40 group, but a backup plan of a 24. No, Cliff, let's think big here. Come on. Okay, we'll think big. Okay. Think positively. Yeah, and then we have a chance to like have maybe something for the DeWitt sculpture if we have a really good day. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I do think we should accommodate for a tip for the driver. 
Let's not forget that. Yeah. So whatever it is, is the yeah. 1200, don't forget to hit the driver. Let's be, okay. Yes, yeah. don't forget that. I mean, we don't want to be embarrassing or anything. <laughs> That'd be terrible. And yeah. they do have a, a cafe or a eating place there so people can get their lunch. That's great. That's good. I like it. <laughs> so we have someone to go to the bathroom on the bus and eat at the place. Yes, you're, you're covered. We're covered. A bar on the bus? Yes. I'm sorry? Did you say a bar on the bus? Hey, that would be a great idea, too. Yeah. <laughs> Although that could be dangerous. <laughs> just go to the casino. <laughs> All right, that's great. Um, the next thing I have is the possible new projects. Um, there was a discussion last time about <coughs> how this money is coming in to support the projects, and it seems to be coming in. Heidi just got us a $2,000 check. Uh, no, it's $1,500. $1,500 check. And um, we oh, have. Oh, yeah, 500 from Paul, so that is $2,000. And we you. have the grant. Did you, uh, has the grant been applied for yet? No, I'm working on it. They have to build it into, um, from what Chris, Christina told me told me they build it into the system and then I've just got to go in and fill it out but it's a much shorter application so mm -hmm. it, it'll be done in a couple a week or so I have a question about that previously they denied us support because they said they were already paying the city for the concerts so yeah. the person that was there at the time had said that if you have a project support grant the same entity can't have a project access, an arts access grant, which is what this committee applied for. Um, but we went back to them, and um, I'm trying to think of which project it was. You have the paperwork, Cliff. It was the uh, Rachel and Mike uh, Weiss. Right, 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 right. Paperwork. So, and they and they gr they gave us the grant. Just so, a different so name we can. It. They're 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 different grants. And when I talk to her about this one, um, these are not um, ongoing grant applications. They're built for a specific um, entity, right? A, mm -hmm. a, a specific body for a specific piece of art. Mm -hmm. um, so they're they're kind of building this in their system for the city of Lewis for this artwork. So that should be done soon. And we'll compromise your concert. I can report. No, no. Right. And I can report that the Delaware Art Museum is um, not going to take advantage of this wonderful opportunity that we gave them. How much? So, so uh, they couldn't find it in their budget. Huh. But the Biggs Museum in Dover are now looking about picking up that Wonderful. option. Wonderful. So I talked to them, and they're saying, well, it could, it could go a little longer. And so uh, the curator up there is interested. I tried to get her contact her today. Um, if that happens, we have to re... The, the contract that you have allows you to um, re, um, re uh, change it later mutually. And it will be reduced five thousand dollars, and the museum will be writing a contract for ten thousand dollars with the artist. So that's all set up if it happens. Um, meaning that we're, you know, instead of being under the gun with money, we're 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 probably going to be pretty flush this year. So, um, but we need. To we still talked raise? about other projects. We still need to raise money for the rip. Um, I think we're good. We're going to talk about financing in a minute. But uh, I think that um, we talked about other projects, and one of them was reducing, re, um, trying to redo the mural wall that we have, and we haven't asked permission. I did find the old contract with Kyle that stated that, and that was, uh, it went up September 15, 2020. And it's for a minimum of 18 months. And um, he does not have to take it down. The city will be responsible for any restoration of the site afterwards. So um, hmm. if we do take this mural down, we're going to have to paint the wall white. Um, but it's open-ended. Is that correct, Cliff, as what? far as... Pardon? Say it again. 
the term for the art being on the mural is open ended. It had a minimum of eighteen yes, months, yes, but right. yeah, but it didn't no. Didn't say eighteen months. It said a minimum. Okay, got it. But no maximum. Okay. You can have that if you want it. No, no. I just wanted to. Um, sure so essentially, uh, to do this, it was one of the best projects we, we ever did because we had all these different public. Uh, we have a lot more public input. And I think anybody that really wants to talk about our art and our installation and what we're doing has an obligation to come to our meetings and talk about it. It's not just for us to you know, go over afterwards after the fact to everybody. I mean, if you wanna, if you wanna come, you know, come to the table and talk about it, we, we include all that. I feel like that uh, what was fun about the mural is that we had so many different proposals, public got animated and they did show up and they did write to the newspaper and they, everybody had their own individual pieces to say about it and that was, it was fun. More engaging. It, it was more engaging is what you were saying. Yeah. About community. So I don't know if you want to go in, in that direction, that's the direction we want to go in or do we want to talk to Karen about looking for a, a, a second piece for a park next summer or for the second physical peak. Um, Denise, what do you think? I'd like to see us do something with local artists. I, uh, I respect Karen, and she's brought us some interesting artists, but I think we could find somebody right around here. So you don't want to do a mural? Or a, a mural's fine. Okay. Um, Just what, yeah. The mural, the competition was open. There's a lot of them. We had a lot of them. Yeah, of and, I, do that. and I think that's one of the things that was really, really good. And I'd like to see us doing more of that. Mm. Good point. It included more Delawareans, that's Were for sure. Carol, you got a thought on that? Mm -mm. Heidi? I guess my thing is I, I like the idea of it being local, open to local and regional artists and really being the best mural and hopefully that will be somebody local but not making it so that it has to be a local person because you know mm -hmm. sometimes yeah. you get a great thing but sometimes you don't. Yeah, we had a pretty, did you, we had a did lot you ever of see the pictures? I have, no. to, I have to show them to you. We, we, had a, we had a wide range, yeah. I mean mm -hmm. a wide range, it was fun. I'd love to see another mural competition, but I agree. I think it should not yeah, just I mean, be limited to local, but also to regional. Yeah. You know, maybe like 100 mile radius yeah. or something. And there were a lot of people from the end, the one that we Baltimore. chose decided not to participate. So we went to none. Uh, no, the one that chose tried to change the contract at the last right. minute, and I said, Look, exactly. you signed the contract now, or I'm going to go to number two. Right. And, and, we, went to, and we went with number two. But it was <laughs> funny because everybody. Everybody had a different first choice. We went around the room, we voted like one, number one, and number two. And everybody had the same second choice. But I do think that um, we have to get our voting down so it doesn't end up being, s like we have to figure that out. So like the one that gets the most choice is the one that wins. I feel like well, last time it didn't work that way. I thought it worked great last time. <laughs> Oh, you must not have gotten the one you wanted. I got the one I wanted in the end. Are you, are you, are you election denier over there? Yes. <laughs> no, I mean, in the end, I got the one I wanted. All right, that's, so that's what happened to everybody. We got all our secretary. We, we can figure that out later. Um, so to do that, you have to, the, the, the parts we have to do is come up with a kind of a budget. And uh, we had a lot of, pushed back on that budget last time, which was five or $6,000, and I would imagine the budget really needs to be about $10,000. That's the going rate. That's the per square foot. It? Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's a lot of work to do that. Be up for on that real? thing yeah. for days. I mean, his was the fastest ever that you ever could do the mural. So, so I think, personally. Who's but. Damon Plus? Yeah, yeah. Da um, no, no, not Damon, but um, Kyle, oh. because he was doing yeah. it all with spray paint. That's the fastest you would uh, ever Damon do. Damon that. took much longer. Than yeah, that. Damon's but was many different. But it was a much more. Um, it was art. Yeah, it was yeah. much more detailed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, our guy did it in two days. Yeah, well, but I don't think that's not for a month. It's <laughs> unusual. Mm -hmm. um, question is, um, uh, where do we get? Didn't we? We posted 
an open call, didn't we? Yeah, and I think we can do that on Art Call, we can do it on Art Cafe, we can do it on uh, DAC, we can do it locally with Art Scene. Well, I personally don't remember posting any of that stuff. Was that you, you Heidi? We yes. researched a whole bunch got. of places and sent it. Who sent it? Call for entry. Specifically, who sent it? I think I work? sent it a bunch of places. That's a, that one was a worker. Huh. Art Cafe, Art um, Call. And presumably this would replace the one that's existing now, so it would be on that wall. I would, we have to ask the BPW, but I, I, I would, that's what I was thinking. It's a pretty mm -hmm. big wall and people like it. And we'll see. Do we have any other ideas? Mm -hmm. No, I don't. We can't put it on, I don't think we can put it on that wall across yeah. the canal because that's a private house. I know. <laughs> All right. But wasn't there something about a dumpster being in front of it? Well, there was, but we decided that whatever happens with the dumpster, we can work do a workaround by just doing a, a broader, okay. wider on the top the instead of going all the way down to the okay. floor. Right? Is that dumpster still going there? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. I mean, there's a fence, so you don't see the it's, bottom. It's right. for um, yeah. Lewis, Lewis and Bloom. Bloom. Yeah. As far as I know, it's still going in. Yeah. So, um, I is, think that would be. What? I'm sorry, Cliff. Is this um, a, a second project for next year, or? It's for. Uh, um, I'm not sure when, when we're counting the first project, but it's a second. It's a project for next spring. Another project for next spring. Yeah. Okay. For 2023, right? We're talking mm -hmm. about. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Spring of 22 is over. <laughs> How about? And so. That? Um, we would need a we need to write a call for entry and then we would need to post the call for entry. Right. I mean, the last one we did the whole thing in six weeks. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. We in guys, COVID. We are so good. Yeah. in COVID. During COVID. Yeah. Um, all right, so that should be something that that yeah. comes front to center and um, for the next, I would suggest maybe Heidi that yeah. you. I'm to yeah, I mean, write the call. Well, we'll post the call. Captain this thing anyway. Oh, captain! Uh, the uh, there you go. <laughs> but we need to, what we need to do is start a call on, and, uh, and ideas. And if we want to be thematic, maybe for the next meeting we can come. If you have a theme that you want to do and discuss, we'd like to have children, or we'd like to have wildlife, or we'd like to have no. Why? Why do we want to do that? Okay, uh, never mind. Bad idea. That will limit, and we don't have yeah. enough as it is. Yeah. No, and please. let's let the artists do what they do. Okay. <laughs> Mm -hmm. This is their have, job. Yeah, we, we got a variety last time. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And I feel like then it's like we only will get three and we could get ten or whatever. You know? Sorry. You're right. You're right. You're out. You're out. That was Wasn't it stupid idea. Some, <laughs> didn't we have a, some sort of a theme about really broad, like living in Lewis oh God, last no. time? I s the last I think time. we should be dying in Lewis. Then That's we will get <laughs> dolphins. <laughs> no, then we no, will get dolphins. No, no. I, I mean, when we did this before, didn't we have some sort of a theme. Did we? Um, because we had, the one that I remember the most was the clothesline. Clothes line. At, and but, then had the birds. And mm -hmm. the kid fishing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but those, and the, and the finalist had all these mm -hmm. themes okay. from Lewis. I think we said it had, had something to do with Lewis was as close. Cause well, we can look it up. Oh yeah. It's all, it's all on the Should website. Should be in our minutes It's somewhere. on the website. Yes. I didn't remember that, but maybe we could do something, but not a full theme, I don't think. If right. we get too close. So, mural project, great. Okay, Heidi's the captain. Um, I hope you're right <laughs> <around the> corner. <laughs> and maybe Karen has some ideas and from places we can get ideas to. And where, what should be our, this is something I would like to know, is what is our date for submission? Yeah, I think like is it in when do we want to February plan? or is it in January? Is it in March? I I would suggest that when we want to have it up, then that start from there and then go May. Up. And who takes the wall back down to white? Yeah, we're gonna have well, to pay for that. Mm -hmm. in, in this particular instance, because it stays up a long time, it does not have to be tied to that same spring just for the summer mentality. Mm. I mean, I think it's wide open, and I would suggest that. Um, what we do is we come up with like a sort of a, a timeline draft with no starting date, saying, "Well, we're gonna s we'll send submissions out, and we'll wait for s eight weeks or six weeks, and then we'll start a calling process." And and 
you know, you see how long the whole thing takes to get it to on the wall and, hmm. and see what we're comfortable doing. And think about the artist too, not being out there in like 90 degree weather. So either spring yeah. or fall, I would say. I'm sorry, I know you don't really care, but. Yeah. Who do you anticipate would be responsible for um, taking down or covering up the We'd existing have to one? Pay well, we somebody to do the wall just like we did last time. Right. We paid somebody to paint the wall. Andrew, and not the best idea. Andrew, Andrew Williams did it. Andrew and Darren Gordon oh, from Darren, BPW yeah. did that, as I he recall. Did it himself. Yeah. Yeah. We Andrew did the low groundwork because he doesn't do ladders, and right. <laughs> and Darren Gordon did the high work. <laughs> but we know, a little busy this time. But we know Tim does ladders because we yeah, see him I do on ladders. Those, on those Sign me up. Pieces, I'll know. help you. But, uh, I'll see you there, so, Heidi. Yeah. The uh, the other thing you can do is I'll you bring can my put roller. in the, you can put in the proposal that they have to if we have enough in the proposal. paint over the other one, but and, and then they have their fresh yeah, surface just before they go. But I mean, it's yeah, that's a reminder. Yeah. Budget yeah. Request. Well, um, oh, go ahead, Barry. We probably would want to find out from the artist what the best paint. Pa yeah, what I mean, what we, what I mean like to do a mural on. I, I mean, I don't mm -hmm. know. Yeah, how to prepare the wall. We got yeah. that. We got that um, from the artist last time. I forget what the name yeah. of it is, but we have that information. Yeah, we did. We got that from someone here. It was like white out or black, some kind of a. <laughs> No, it's the, um, it's it's like a it's like a real heavy paste you put yeah. on like when you have dirty walls and mm -hmm. kills mm -hmm. kills but similar kills, 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 that's mm -hmm. right. kills. But I and actually kills. bet I bet we're gonna have to power wash that wall first because it's probably got stuff on it, right? It's got paint on it. I know it's got paint, but it doesn't have dirt. Doesn't yeah, it has a dirt. Yeah, but probably. power wash probably. might take some of the paint yeah. off too. Good thinking, Denise. Oh, yeah. Well, it, it depends on the power washer, but I've right. seen them take paint off. Yep. Okay. So, Cliff, if I may, this is um, just a good reminder that we're heading into budget season. So, talking about a new project, too, we'll need to have the budget request come in. Okay. Budget request. Um, I guess it is. Yeah, we're let's go on to our financial situation here. Um, so the background on this is that we've been trying for uh, since Tim got here to get a good idea of our financial situation and we have not succeeded and um, I know that we've done a few um, so this is important for everybody to listen to please I'm listening thank you so we have ideas of uh, we have the, this, the spreadsheet of, of how expenses have been passed out. We have a list of um, pieces of, of donations that have been giving. But we don't have any kind of a, uh, a knowledgeable base of trying to say, say, how did we do this year, our donations, our, uh, along with our expenditures. And in trying to find out what happens, um, it turns out um, I have we went, I went to you know Carolyn Jones and she was really helpful and put a team together and we had two meetings trying to understand what's been going on because I'm not getting the information that I think we need and we found out why didn't we ever <laughs> so in Maria, I met and we decided um, I'm I'm walking around thinking that we had a lot of money saved up because we've been getting these donations and we have been under budget every year and we haven't spent the amount of money that was allocated to us. So I'm looking for where this money is because it's never applied on your on the little spreadsheet you do because that's not a balance sheet and that's not an accounting. It's right. just it's just a, a list of numbers. So it turns out that um, we've collected over ten thousand dollars and I did a sheet which I made a copy for everybody. This is not official, but this is these are, these are my notes based on Thank what you, Tony. I thought we spent and where um, you can this one. Uh, based on getting thank you note. I got thank you note information from, from Denise. I got um, I got some information from our contracts. I got um, some information from the spreadsheets that we have, and 
this was a basis that I asked to be investigated because I wanted to know, you know, where is our nine thousand six hundred dollars or ten thousand um, dollars? When you look at the um, uh, so. At that meeting, it was determined that we never applied the in 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 anything that we've received expenditures based on um, our income as well as our our uh, budget from the from the uh, from the um, uh, city council budget that we're given every year. And so here is here's the overall uh, uh, numbers of what we have spent on art projects and. The um, it turns out that yeah. when we were collecting money and telling people we had an art fund, we really didn't. And um, it, and I don't have. I, we're not going to go backwards so much because it's 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 a waste of a bunch of time. But essentially, there is no fund showing the money that we have. Uh, been receiving, and there's no single place where it's been sitting because it's been allocated. And um, when um, there is a, uh, there was a, a, a difference of opinion on what was going on with that, uh, just a difference of understanding it. And and so, Anne Marie wrote this up, ninety percent, and uh, and this is um, what kind of need to do going forward. We don't have the money, $10,000 in reserve, which I thought we had, because they were taking our our donations and just and applying against our bills as, as they came due. And there's two reasons why they did that, but I think both, basically it was a, a significant under, misunderstanding. Um, and we both are going on our merry ways thinking, we know, what's, we know what's happening. And finally, um, through uh, this interference, uh, through this process, we, we figured out what's going on. Um, I'm going to read it to you. It says, uh, in discussions with staff, uh, that's um, the city staff, PAC, so I, and regarding PAC's finance, it's become apparent that the staff and PAC have di a different understanding of the role of private contributions versus the budget allocation provided in the city budget. Mm -hmm. It has been PAC's understanding that the contributions would be kept in a fund and only utilized for projects if the city appropriations did not cover PAC expenses. The administration believed that these funds were intended to support any public art works and were debited to PAC's expenses before the monies allocated from the city's budget. So it's like, who's, who's, whose pocketbook they hit first, they've been hitting ours. Now, essentially, we believe that the contribution should only be in touch if the city appropriation is depleted. And this is the basis that we used when we asked for this money. And uh, the the picture, the first sheet I gave you with the yellow stuff, uh, that shows money that came in for the tower project, which, which we canceled. The city at that time refunded a lot of money and offered to refund the money. But it was under, I mean, it was my understanding that um, if we left the money there in the fund, it could be used for a future project. And that was the basis of how I thought this was all going along. Uh, the um, so th anyway so this is the basis we use when we ask for public funds that we collected. The staff believes that contributions were intended to support the public artworks, and the city funds would only supplement what we collected. So to clarify which is correct going forward, and to address the use of private contributions to support our temporary artworks, we need to make a two phone recommendation to the mayor and city council. Now this is a draft and would probably be handled in some sort of a workshop. But uh, going forward that we request the, that we, you know, we clarify that the contributions are only used to support public arch projects after our budget is expended and we would request that the second account be set up to hold these contributions. I have no idea the legality of that or holding fund or accounting, I'm not an accountant. but the thinking is we had these reserves. 
Um, and um, now with regard to the prior contributions that may have been expended, <coughs> or when they say, you know, used to, to um, cover some of our, our expenses, uh, we, we think that um, they could be refunded because if they were collected and without that intention, that would, it would be the wrong thing. Or you could give the person the option to leave it with the city if the fund that we're looking for is accepted. So if the city agrees to create a holding account, the funds that have been collected since 2000, or at least that amount of money, would be placed there. And, um, and the, so the people who, who put money in with the intention that it was gonna go to that fund would be made uh, made well. And, the, and then the funds would be used for our committee to fund projects, to fund projects not covered in their budget. So the idea of this is that we need a, a sort of a work group with the city and the, and the financing people, some people from city government. Don't abandon me on this, Anne Marie. <laughs> How am I doing? Is this, do I get it right? I think you're summing up the discussion. Right, and so um, what we want to try and do is, is uh, if we could agree to this as a committee that this is what we want to do, we would like to go forward and create a meeting with the city, whoever you think should be appropriately included and uh, clear up this matter. This is one of the reasons why we have, um, when you looked at those spreadsheets of <coughs> what was our budget and what was spent, it was like just all over the place and one year it showed like nothing was spent. And we, I know we put in three things and, and so it, it, it explains why it was so incomprehensible when we were looking at the, trying to make, make <coughs> sense of, of what we were spending. But we have spent, you know, we, we have spent some money and we do have grants and all of that stuff needs to be accounted for. In a, when I was talking to uh, Carolyn Jones, it's, it's really like you need like a, like a balance sheet for, the, for our, our little division. And mm -hmm. it, doesn't come, it doesn't come off the, the computer system that we, we use currently. There's no way you can just pull it because you have uh, you know two different functions of that of that software, and it have to be hand put together by hand. But it shouldn't be hard because there's only like eight or ten yeah. checks a year. Mm -hmm. you know, but but you know. So that, what you're saying is we have to keep an accounting of it separately from the city budget. Well, we I have to. We have sense. to. The city doesn't have a button where they can say here's the here's the balance sheet for your department. So, so just to explain how this has been dealt with in the budget, we have a revenue line in the budget and in our, our monthly financial reports that show any revenue that is um, for public art, that comes in for public art. Our understanding was that when those donations are received, that is there to support public art so that when we have these contracts with artists to do the public art that those contributions support that. So we have been using that at putting it on in the revenue line and that then goes out to pay the, the artists. So the total in donations received minus what was refunded because the, the, there was a lot refunded because of the COVID issue. Um, we've received $9,480 in donations. The city has paid in the contracts for the various art installations, 27,400. So there's, um, you know, there's, I don't know, I, I use round numbers, I'm not the accountant. So I, I, I would say, you know, you've got 27, if you say $27,000 minus, 9,000, you've got $18,000 of city funds that were spent to support the public art installation and nine, really about 9,500 of the private donations. So our, our understanding was that was how it was supposed to be spent. Um, but now I understand that the committee believed that it was being set aside in a separate account for some later date for I guess a larger 
Uh, I, I'm not quite well, sure for, for what, like, but for like the, it's it's sort of like the situation that we had when we did the the wit thing, and it right. seems it was a big number. And the reason I didn't worry about it because I said, well, look, we got this this fund that we can support that with if we need to. So, but Anne Marie, you know, my understanding has always been that whatever money the city um, decides to budget to the public art committee could not be spent paying the artists. That that was um, when when the uh, committee got its first budget, and then again when the um, issue of the water tower art came up, that was explicitly stated by the council at the time, and that was a different council than we have now. Um, that the city funds would support the educational efforts of right. the committee but not the actual art, that the art would be funded from donations. Right. So that was, that was why we were doing it that way. Um, but based on the discussions we've had recently, I guess I've learned that the committee did not believe, did not know that we were spending the donations I on think, the public art. I think art. the idea was that they didn't want us to, to buy art. I think that was the intention. Well, the, it came up with the water tower, and the water tower was a lease as well. They, right. Well, it's, it's, we're not—we're still not buying art. And if if you say we're not we're not going to uh, give the money to the artists, well, then we're not doing concerts. So because we're paying artists, okay. well, but in a concert. But, so. But, um, so so I guess this is why we didn't want to get mired in the past. Right. This is why I we want to talk about, about what that. what we need to do going I, forward. I, I do think very much that what you what you're saying is what you what you believe and what. And, and what I wrote is what I think the committee was going for. And, and let me know if this makes sense to you guys. Because you asked about the same question. It's my understanding the Public Art Committee has agreed, even though it is, ex it is permitted under the public arts policy as written and approved, that we will not use public funds to purchase public art and we, as we explore our culture, that we won't use public funds to purchase art. This does not apply to the concept of putting on educational art exhibitions as we have been doing for the last three years, for which about 80% of those costs are not going to the artists, they're going to U-Hauls because they're paying for costs of transportation and paying on the pieces to get here. Our, our exhibitions to us are equal in scope to hosting a concert in Stango Park where you don't buy anything but you hire a show. So uh, that is the difference I made and took away from that meeting in city council. It was like we're not going to buy art. It didn't say art projects, and I, you know, and I and there, everybody got into leasing. Well, don't pay the artists. And I said, okay, we'll charge us twice as much for transportation, and and the bill's clear. I mean, I said this is crazy to try to play that game of what you, who you can't let the artists make any profit or whatever. They, we just hire them. We're hiring a show, and that's how we look at it. So. Is that, what, is that what everybody else thinks happened? Well, I was thinking that it's the art, the travel, the hope, like if we can give them a hotel, we do, but if we can't, we, that is included in it. All of the things that they have to do, right. so which in my mind, they don't make any money at the end. No. So we're just hiring an art project, and so that's why our differential from what you were thinking as the interpretation <coughs> of, the, of the nature of that meeting, we did have another meeting that was got really mired in detail with um, uh, a budget meeting maybe two years ago with Dennis Reardon, maybe that was three years ago. And that's when they found out that all of, the, all of our expenses were going, were just put under miscellaneous anyway, after my, minutely arguing all these accounts. So um, moving forward, you understand how our committee feels. Uh, you understand, um, and we understand we have a problem. and. Um, I, I think there needs to be a motion. I mean, because I heard something different from Tony, then it's so I'm not sure. Okay, well, I the think motion. There needs to be a motion so council is clear of what the committee's asking. Okay, the re motion is to take this piece of paper that we wrote yeah, yeah. and to um, ask, request that the contribution, uh, that the mayor and city council have a workshop to discuss this and come up with a policy we can all agree on. Great, so can you request the motion? Uh, yeah, someone motion else has motion. to make that so motion. I move, I move that we pursue this 
send this to city council. Send this to city council to. to I'll to second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Um, Tim? I just want to ask a question, Heidi, of you. Uh, several minutes ago, 10, 15 minutes ago, um, I think I heard you say something about $1,500 and $500. Mm -hmm. And are these uh, donations that have been received? Is that correct? So 1500 I just gave. And 500 I'm getting a check for. I see. And those will be put into our, like well, I had her right on their public arts right. committee. Right. Right. <coughs> Which she didn't do. And we have. It says uh, it on the line. It says like City of Lewis Public Arts. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so anyway. Um, but I assured her that it would be used for the public arts. That for it would not be used for the city. Right. I, I do want to clarify. I, I, this all of the money has been used for public art. It, the difference is that it's not sitting. It, it's been used for the public art that you all have been bringing forward. But used against our budget. It's been used it, first used instead of second. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I mean, and and I, so I mean, if I, I mean, if we do that, we uh, we, I mean, I, I mean, I, de I definitely would use the city's money before I would use my own. And so I kind of <laughs> <laughs> like, why, why, why would you, why would you raise money? Well, what, yeah. What's the point of raising money? I mean, but we'll talk about like that. There's, there's an eighteen thousand dollar <laughs> difference between what was allocated to the public art committee and what is actually being spent. It sounds as though the rest of the city's budget is eighteen thousand dollars in the hole. It's I well, no, because there there has the the nine thousand four hundred eighty is just the donations. There has been money budgeted right. for the public the arts committee. No, no, it, it's been it's been more than that because it's also the the consulting. It's paid for the consulting. It's been, it's paid for. Um, yeah. Um, the Some Jackie signage. to do the minutes, Jackie's yeah, the, minutes. the signage, and, and we did we not have, include um, the signage in this. Um, I mean, it sounds as though we have the, the city needs to budget a, a larger amount to the public art committee in order to bring public art into Lewis on a temporary basis. I, I, I don't. I think we're we're doing pretty well. To, I mean, yeah, I, I well. mean, we're we're spending about. If okay. We Thank have been able to spend. We right. we spent. If you charge, if you spent just what the city gave us mm -hmm. over the last four years, we would still be in the black. Okay, that's great. All right. Anything mm -hmm. else? <coughs> right. uh, what about uh, meeting for uh, oh, December? December? Right. I really did. There's a question whether we needed a December need a meeting. meeting. Please no. Please no. Okay. <laughs> so we won't have a meeting in December. I would prefer not to because okay. I'm now. Unless there's an emergency you know, and you don't. I, if there's not a December meeting, I guess I want to make sure that you understand. We have not gotten a budget request for the Public Art Committee. Right. So we are building the budget for next year. We were supposed to have the budget request into our office by, I think, November 28th. And we're building the budget. We have to deliver the draft budget to mayor and council on February 1st. Well, so you if you don't meet till the end of January, you're not going to have time to even talk about a budget. Okay. Um, all right. Well, we can address that right now because we're on financing. Uh, can we use the budget that you in, you put in the projected 2023 year budget in your um, on your in your county? I, I, will, I will tell you what I've told every other committee I've talked to about budgets. You can you you should put in what you believe you are going to spend and have a backup backup documentation as to to why so so for instance we did the the first payment for the dewitt so the rest of the dewitt should be in that budget right um you talked about the um you talked about the mural that should be in the budget anything you want to do between april 1st of 23 and march 31st of 24 needs to be submitted, um, I would highly not recommend putting in just a number. We are at the point now where we are seeing revenues flatten and in some cases decline. We are seeing costs go up. So we are going to be going into a very difficult budget. We just 
passed the police contract, so there's a, a price tag to that. So we are going to go into a very difficult budget where I anticipate that they are going to be looking to resolve how you either increase revenues, which, you know, and or cut expenses. It's going to be both. We know so, that. So the, the so, reason, um, I mean, when I saw that you have an adopted fiscal year 2023 budget, is that the one you're talking about? No, we are in fiscal 220. We are in fiscal 23. So okay. fiscal 23 will end on March 31st, and the new fiscal year begins fiscal 24. So that the fiscal year relates to the year it ends. So the new fiscal year starts April 1st, and that's the budget we're building now. And that's the 24 budget. That's the 24 budget. Right. Is there any chance in hell that we could resolve our? It's hard to do a budget without knowing what's going to well, happen. Well, I, I mean, so money that we buy. what well, we can, you, you all have provided a recommendation that we can put on the December 12th council meeting. So you will have a sense of, of what <coughs> council is on um, on that. Um, well, all right. Well, I, I'll get you a budget and I will, you know, we'll submit a budget. I, I don't. Since our budget does not have a lot of detail in it, like it doesn't year. have the detail doesn't go in the lines. Right. The detail, Ellen it's, Lorraine it's and I have, have just, binders right. of the backup that, and, and again, we did this yesterday. We've started, I, um, our budget deadline was Monday. We started our budget meetings with departments on Tuesday, and we tell them, come with your paper backup so that when we're sitting there in council saying, why do you need this? Why can't this? We've got Stanley. spreadsheets. We've got quotes on things. And, yeah. and that's what we need to be able to, to back it up. The other reason that you didn't have the budget is we had that issue about the $3,000 being a payable or not a payable and whether it was going to be reinstalled and whether that money was going to go against. When you right, were but, the budget but we're talking about was, next fiscal year. I got you. I got you. But I never got an answer on that, so I didn't know exactly where we no, stood. And no, what I said was... We were gonna no, I, that I we would make sure that what you needed got done this year. Right. Right. I, I, I mean, we weren't going to physically adjust the budget and put three thousand dollars in, but we weren't going to we weren't going to deny things because of a three thousand dollar difference. We would find money to make sure that well, like that I things said, would work. We've always managed money very well. Nobody else makes you money. <laughs> All right, any other questions? So are you gonna make the budget? I'll, do, I'll okay. do that. We only have like four, four or five items, items. Yeah. pretty easy. Okay. And most of them are committed to already, so. Well. All right, Can we anybody adjourn? else? Motion to adjourn. <laughs> All right, motion to adjourn, I'll accept it. That hand went up fast.